Hello, this is Stephen Allard, and for this podcast, I am going to be talking about the philosopher Paul Feyerbend. Feyerbend was an Austrian-born philosopher of science who worked at the University of California, Berkeley. He was born January 13, 1924, and died on February 11, 1994, so he is a relatively new and modern philosopher. He is most famous for being a supporter of epistemological anarchism, which he popularized in his book titled Against Method, which was published in 1975. Famous philosophers such as Karl Popper and Ludwig Wittgenstein helped influence Feyerbend, and for my podcast I will provide a general outline of his book and his position for epistemological anarchism. In my opinion, the book can be summarized through five main points, in which I will go into further detail. The first is that science is essentially an anarchistic enterprise. The second is that science is a myth. The third is the appeal to epistemological anarchism. The fourth is one of his famous sayings that anything goes. And the fifth and final point as an outline to his book is that science isn't encouraged more than other means of investigation. The first idea that is important in understanding Feyerbend's framework is that science is essentially an anarchistic enterprise. For example, we may use hypotheses that contradict well-confirmed theories or well-established experimental results, and science in certain instances progresses due to this. No theory ever agrees with all the facts in its domain, and it is not always the theory that is to be blamed for this. This shows that there isn't as much inherent order or organization when doing science. Another example, which a little more specific, is that in his book he shows how rationalists are really acting out of irrationality through ad absurdum, which is the idea that you take premises that are true and prove them to be false through later premises or statements. Due to the anarchic nature of its methods, science is essentially a myth in our culture. It is considered a myth in the eyes of Feyerbend because the general aim of science or a scientist is to establish objective knowledge or truth, and that is something that can't be achieved from such an anarchic enterprise. The idea that science can and should be running according to fixed and universal rules is unrealistic. The thought that science can do this is detrimental to science because it fails to recognize the complex physical and historical conditions that influence scientific change, discoveries, etc. It would attract a more dogmatic and less adaptable approach to factual matters. When we branch away from this cliché and unrealistic view of science and view scientific inquiry the way Feyerbend intends one, can now see similarities between science and myth. A myth is a quest for a theory that is a quest for unity underlying apparent complexity. The theory places things in a causal context that is wider than the causal context provided by common sense. And that is something that science does as well, which is essentially theoretical superstructures. There are also other similarities that Feyerbend provides in great detail, but that is the general feature that science and myths share. The third point is the appeal to epistemological anarchy. And if you haven't noticed the pattern yet, all of these points flow into each other to build up as one grand argument. Epistemological anarchy is an individual's belief in rejecting or opposing objective truth or knowledge in favor of the subjective. Since he has shown that science is a myth due to the unrealistic interpretation of science as achieving objective knowledge and the striking similarities that mythology has with science, this is why he prefers people to take the side of the subjective. Feyerbend also believes that epistemological anarchism is more humanitarian than other systems of organization because it doesn't impose rigid dogmatic rules onto the scientist. He also provides examples such as the Copernican Revolution and the Aristotelian Tower Experiment to show that good science, quote-unquote, doesn't necessarily operate to a certain fixed or objective method. Epistemological anarchism is considered to be his greatest contribution. The fourth point that outlines his argument is the phrase, anything goes. Due to the lack of objective knowledge or truth, any method is encouraged, regardless of how irrational they may seem. This rejects any single method in the realm of science, which would include something as popular as the scientific method, in which one follows dogmatically a method that includes formulating a question, formulating a a hypothesis, make a prediction, then then one tests it, 
and finally analyze the data. The final point deals with the relationship of science with other ideas, such as society or religion. According to Fireben, science is not encouraged more than other means of investigation. The rejection of any single rigid method has effects upon society. Science shouldn't be as democratic that Western culture makes it out to be. Since anything goes due to the lack of a universal method, there is therefore no justification for valuing scientific claims over claims by other ideologies, like religious or mystical. Science can be oppressive in society rather than a liberating movement, which is why Fireman believes that, like religion, the state and science should be separated from one another. 